Hello and welcome to the pre-lab for the determination of a weak acid concentration and um, usually we use soda uh, some sort of pop or some sort of soda for this so for this lab a few things you're gonna want to sort of have in your in your frame of mind one our goal is determine the molarity of a weak acid so we're gonna need the moles and we're gonna need the liters Every titration, we're going to use this sort of situation where we have the known comparison to the unknown. Uh, we have molarity, we have moles, and we have liters. The known, in this case, will be a base, and the unknown, obviously, will be our soda. Now, I will indicate to you the concentration of the known base when we enter the lab, and I will indicate to you, you know, approximately how much of the actual soda that you would like to, you'll need to be using. Um, so when we start titrating this thing, uh, our soda, our, our weak acid, will be neutralized plus its base, and it will kick this weak acid over to a weak base. Um, we're going to be graphing this as we go. Now, we've done previous titrations where a strong acid would react with a strong base and in this case your salt or your end of product is neutral and in that sense you would cross at your equivalence point at pH of 7. Now for the strong acid strong base we use an indicator to indicate that we are crossing 7 and that indicator was phenol failing. Phenol failing is clear when we're in the acid range and basic when we're uh, pink when we're in the basic range um, so what happened was we have this strong acid and then regardless of how much we add we were simply going to be staying quite acidic and then all of a sudden it, it runs out of acid and we go vertical and all we're really worrying about is when we turn pink and it turns pink uh, somewhere in this range here, okay? As soon as it turns pink, we know we're real close to our equivalence point, which is the vertical point. For the soda lab, because we are not dealing with a strong acid, we're dealing with a weak acid, then our at our equivalency point, we will actually be basic. So at this point, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our we use vernier in this case and it will look like this okay we'll have a certain amount of volume of base and then I'll have uh, the pH now what I'll do is I'll hit collect and keep those are the two buttons that we're going to see and you'll have the pH there so when I hit collect that means okay tell the computer we're starting All right. Um, at that point I'll hit, if I hit keep it'd be zero milliliters and that would be the pH um, so at that point, it would give us our first actual titration point right here. Okay, now it's a, let's say this is 7, uh, 0, and then 14. Notice we're not, this is where the strong acid was located. We're a little bit north of that because we are a weak acid. Uh, as soon as I've added enough of my base to eliminate this guy, all I have left is this, a weak base. So I am going to be tracking every milliliter that I add, and I'm going to be tracking it as I move along here. And as I become more, as I add more base, I slowly creep up. But eventually, I start running out of my acid in my soda, and this thing starts to spike. And it doesn't spike all that much. It's not like this guy which is awesome because you really can see that spike. It goes from very uh, strong ba acid to a very strong base. We get a very big, steep curve. In this one, we're going from a weak acid to a, essentially another weak base. We don't get a lot of, of uptick. So depending on how many points you have on the actual uptick, you may not see it as well as you would like. So the first trial, what we'll do is we'll attempt to simply figure out where this general transition will occur. 
course, we're going from a weak acid to a weak base. At some point, we would want to cross 7. Now, the actual equivalency point most likely would be right in the middle, uh, somewhere in the weak base range. has to be. Um, what we do to actually figure out our unknown, this guy here, question mark, is I'm going to use same math max, but I'm going to use my volume of my known. This would be labeled as milliliters of base added. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so a uh, small break there, but either way, so um, we will be recording down the volume of base, grab my pencil here, uh, right here, okay, as we record our base, this volume right here is very important. I usually look at the corner here and the corner here and try to find the midpoint between these two points, and I consider that to be my absolute equivalence point. That comes down, that's my uh, volume of base added. That is going to go right here. That would replace your typical start, finish, change table. We do not need this table for this lab because we are tracking on the, on the computer. So once you have the volume of your occlusion, well, then you can just solve for the moles, solve for these moles, divide by your original volume, uh, which was in the beaker below. And so original constant moles divided by original volume gives me my original concentration. Um, just a couple little thing heads up wise for the lab. Now this is nothing to do with the, the rest of this is just procedural stuff. Uh, that could change year to year, whatever, but uh, for this lab, uh, the setup will look something like this. We will have a beaker, uh, a beaker here, okay, a beaker, all right. We'll have a stir plate, potentially, keep that in mind, stir plate here, ring stand here, and this drawing is awesome. Uh, we'll have a bracket holding the pipette. Uh, I'll have another bracket holding the pH meter. Now these pH meters are expensive. Be careful with the pH meter. We'll have our liquid in here. Little magnetic stir bar. This stir bar can just be turned on by a little knob here. We want to be running slow. I don't, you can try it out fast before we put the pH meter. Once pH meter is in there, please slow it down. Just need to gently mix it, okay? You drop in, if one of your partners can set this thing up, okay? One partner can set the actual unknown up in here. Um, now, as far as this goes, it's very important here, just for making things run smoothly, I normally say it doesn't matter where you fill your beer up to. But because we're using the computer, it is just easier to fill it to the zero line. The reason why is because as you start adding stuff, the computer has this little chart here, and the chart's located right here. And when it hits collect, it's going to say zero here. And that way, once this thing hits zero, you can have this column match up exactly with your burette column. That way, no matter what you add, whether it's one milliliter or two milliliters at a time, or let's say you drop it all the way down to, let's say, you know, 10 milliliters, you can just drop it and then hit go to your computer. Let's say you drop 10 milliliters in. All you need to do is uh, hit collect, hit keep, and then type in 10 milliliters. Zero, 10, and if this amount is the total amount that you've added so far, okay? That is the amount of mil the line here. It tells them where to go here, and the computer picks this amount here. So let's walk through this just kind of uh, the whole lab just kind of close to see how everything's working. Uh, you, you come to the lab, I'll have to give you, I will give you the concentration of, of the acid. I'll give you the concentration of the known acid. 
I'll tell you how much of this unknown to use. One of your lab partners is going to fill the burette um, up to the top. Lab partner number one, maybe. Another lab partner is going to get this amount ready. All right. Um, and then make sure you measure this with a graduated cylinder. All right, so at that point, everything's ready to go. You have your stir plate going right here. You've got the pH meter in there. You're checking out your pH meter's reading, acidic. Um, next, you hit collect. That means the reaction's starting. If you hit keep, it's going to ask you every time you hit keep, it's going to um, grab a pH and you're going to type in how many milliliters you added. So if you hit keep, you right away you type in zero because you haven't added anything yet. Next, your lab partner drops in, let's just say they drop in one milliliter, okay? So you drop in uh, one milliliter. Then let the pH meter somewhat equalize. You'll see here the pH meter will be reading pH. You add some base, allow it to adjust a little bit. When it comes to a balance, you know, one, one partner will indicate, okay, keep, and then you hit the keep button, you type in, one milliliter and it will record the pH at that point and it will put something on the graph, a dot. Then partner adds another volume, could be one milliliter, could be two milliliters. Either way, if they add two milliliters, now you're at three. So the partner who's running the beer rat says three milliliters. That's how much is that currently added. So you go three milliliters and let it balance pH, hit keep and it record the new pH. And then you could go, does, you can go four and a half. So if you accidentally go to four and a half, then you can simply say, okay, I, w I went to four and a half. Now the person knows, okay, I we hit keep, type in four and a half, and the computer will mark it at four and a half. It doesn't have to be right, exactly, but as long as it matches up zero to zero, it's just easy to keep track of. Uh, I would also say you can do, hopefully do two trials. Trial one will look rough and dirty and just do, I would say, maybe two milliliters at a time or even one milliliter at a time and track out your pH. All right, so your objection of your first trial is to get a general idea of where this thing is gonna bump. And of course, it's gonna be um, harder to read. Once you have a general idea, your second trial will be, can go much faster and when you get to that very jump point, you can add a bunch more points in there. So you might be going three or four milliliters here, but then you could go a half a milliliter, half a milliliter, in order to get three. Or keep in mind that one milliliter added in the beginning will not cause the same difference as one milliliter added at the, at the um, equivalence point. At some point, one drop will cause a large shift of pH. As soon as you start running out of your acid, um, the next drop or small amount could push you over, over uh, to removing it completely. All right, uh, that is for the most part uh, our determination of weak acids lab.